In the heart of Central Asia lies a hidden paradise, shrouded in silence, waiting to be discovered. This land is rich with treasures and has been favored by many important rulers throughout history. It is the land of warm-hearted people and a unique culture, Uzbekistan. It is a land that cherishes its ancestors' heritage and embraces Islam, making it a true Central Asian haven. At one time, it was the lifeblood and capital of the Islamic world. Samarkand was known as the Pearl of the East, while Bukhara was a powerful center where Islam thrived. Renowned scholars like Ibn Sina, Al-Khwarizmi, Al-Fargani, and Al-Bukhari made significant contributions to science under the umbrella of this civilization. The cities in Uzbekistan are steeped in history. During Timur's reign, some of the world's largest and most magnificent cities were located within Uzbekistan's borders. Timur is considered the most important figure in their history. He played a crucial role in saving Central Asia from Mongol invasions and ensuring the continuation of Uzbek lineage. Timur's era also witnessed the construction of significant madrasas, Islamic schools, in Uzbekistan. For instance, the Rajasthan madrasas in Samarkand are recognized by UNESCO as the first madrasas built in Central Asia. Today, the Islamic atmosphere in the region is preserved in all its glory. Taking Uzbekistan as a whole, it is home to around 35 million people and has been an independent state for only 32 years since the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Although Uzbekistan bore some marks of Soviet Russia between 1924 and 1991, the Uzbek people managed to preserve their identity, language, and strong connection to Islam. Their currency is called sum and one dollar equals 11,500 sum. Uzbekistan primarily produces cotton and wheat, which they export to other countries. Thousands of Uzbek citizens work in various countries and send money back home to support their families. The country is rich in natural resources like gas, oil, and even gold reserves, but a large portion of the population does not enjoy a comfortable life. The country is still in a developing phase after 30 years of post soviet rule, and they strive for continuous progress. On the other hand, if you take a mere two-hour train journey from Samarkand to Bukhara, you will be greeted by another magnificent masterpiece. This place was once the third most important city on the ancient Silk Road. You will find one of the world's largest and oldest minarets there. It is known as the Kalan Minaret, constructed in 1127. And despite the Mongol invasion, it has managed to stand tall to this day. Another significant endeavor in Uzbekistan is their carpet weaving. When you think of carpets, Iran might come to mind for many. However, the importance given to carpet weaving in Uzbekistan can easily rival that of Iran. Uzbek women engage in the art of carpet weaving, creating beautiful handcrafted carpets that they sell in bazaars to earn a living. You can find handcrafted products at reasonable prices within the country, but imported goods face hefty taxes. For instance, when you visit Tashkent, you'll notice that over 90% of the vehicles in traffic are Chevrolet, branded cars. Due to the high taxes on imported goods in the country, the global automotive giant General Motors decided to open a factory in Uzbekistan and began producing Chevrolet cars locally. With lower taxes on domestically produced vehicles, the roads are now filled with Chevrolet cars. Moreover, Uzbekistan is not only famous for its vehicles, but also for having the largest bazaars in Central Asia. When you look from above, the covered market in Tashkent resembles a dome or a tortoise shell. Those familiar with this city know that the entire population does their shopping and fulfills their needs in this market. If you focus on a specific food item, they will offer you a taste of it, hoping you'll be more inclined to make a purchase. In addition to that, you can easily find sunflower seed vending machines, samarkand halva, and the sour cheese they call curd in Uzbek bazaars. In places like Tashkent and Samarkand, not only ready, made products but also the famous Uzbek bread is made. 
They have elevated the art of breed making to such heights that bakers literally immerse themselves inside the traditional clay oven to bake the bread. They never compromise on the quality of their work and make every sacrifice possible to produce the most delicious bread. Watching the making of Uzbek bread, which is unique to the country, is as enjoyable and intriguing as tasting it. I'm sure you have never seen bakers anywhere in the world putting so much effort and passion into making a single product. The result of this immense dedication is the Uzbek bread itself. Due to the various ingredients used in Uzbek bread, it is more filling and nutritious compared to regular bread. In fact, it is said that soldiers used to take this bread with them to wars as it could sustain them for up to a month without getting spoiled. At least, that's what Uzbek bakers claim. On average, a single bakery produces around 8,000 of these famous Uzbek bread loaves daily. In Uzbekistan, the appetite Inducing allure is not limited to their delicious bread alone. This place stands out as one of the most carnivorous countries in Central Asia and has also gained renown for its delectable street food. During the Soviet rule, they were deprived of preserving these culinary traditions for many long years, causing Uzbek cuisine to lose its vibrancy. Nowadays, the streets of Uzbekistan are once again vibrant and, so to speak, exuding life. The Uzbeks proudly consider themselves the unrivaled center of pilaf in the world. Local restaurants kick, start their day at 8 am, embarking on the art of preparing this mouth-watering dish. But mind you, they don't use small pots for this masterpiece. They cook it in colossal cauldrons. These cauldrons are filled with kilos of meat, rice, chickpeas, carrots, and oil. For instance, a 100 kilo meat filaf takes in 40 liters of sunflower oil. The first step in preparing the filaf is to bring the meat and oil together in this grand cauldron and cook them to perfection. The Uzbeks are not fond of undercooked meat, so it's essential for the meat to be thoroughly cooked in the oil, losing its red color in the process. After that, they add the carrots and chickpeas to blend with the succulent meat. Finally, the rice. The star ingredient of Uzbekistan's national dish is added to the cauldron, turning it into a delectable filaf. Until the filaf is fully cooked, they place trays on top, and hours later, it becomes ready to be savored. This is how the preparation of Uzbekistan's national dish generally unfolds. Once the meal is ready, the master chefs offer their prayers, gently blending the components that make up the filaf and present it to the delight of their customers. The reason why Uzbek filaf isn't purely white is that the carrots impart their color to the rice, giving it a delightful hue. So, when you visit Uzbekistan, three main ingredients related to food should come to mind. Plenty of bread, abundant rice, and loads of meat. These three elements hold a special place in Uzbekistan's culinary culture. Therefore, if you have any plans to visit or even live in Central Asian countries, you must have a fondness for meat, and you should not hold any grudge against it or be distant from it. Not just beef and lamb, but you should also get accustomed to eating horse meat. Yes, there are families in Uzbekistan who prepare filaf with horse meat. However, this meat eating habit has increased the risk of heart and vascular diseases among the elderly population. In both Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan, thousands of people struggle with heart problems and clogged arteries. In the rural areas of Uzbekistan, there is also a distinct type of pastry known as samsa. It resembles a seashell in appearance. The rural people of Uzbekistan refrain from buying bread or other dough based products from outside. They often use traditional oven fires for cooking rather than gas stoves. One of the significant factors contributing to the deliciousness of Uzbek cuisine is this traditional cooking method. For example, nearly every household has a closed oven where they prepare various pastries and bread. Inside this Samsa pastry, they can include chicken or other types of meat as well. Do you think Uzbekistan excites people? not only with its historical sites and cuisine, but also with its daily life? For example, Tashkent is the most populous city in Central Asia with a population of 3 million. 
If you've been to Russia before, you may feel that the city reminds you of Russia in many ways. For instance, the streets and roads in Tashkent are very wide. Despite its vast land area of 449,000 square kilometers, the relatively small population in Uzbekistan has led to spacious roads and considerable distances between buildings in its cities. Additionally, the architecture of the buildings also bears a resemblance to Russian buildings. Even the Soviet-era playgrounds can still be found intact in the back streets of the city. The fact that similar structures exist in almost every country that was once part of the Soviet Union and that they bear such close resemblance has always been a surprising reality to me. Uzbekistan receives a considerable number of immigrants from Russia, and you can see both Uzbek and Russian languages on many signs, especially in the capital. Russian holds an important place in the lives of Uzbeks, and you can find Russian writings everywhere, particularly in bookstores. The Uzbek language shares various similarities with Turkish. Despite being geographically distant, countries where Turkish is spoken are linguistically related. In the streets of Uzbekistan, you will come across numerous street vendors. People sell various products along the roadsides. Moreover, Uzbekistan has moved away from being a closed-off country and Western famous chain stores have started to establish their presence in the country. However, it is truly saddening to witness children begging on the streets of Tashkent. When you sit in a fixed spot on the street, someone might approach you and ask for money. Of course, they are being sent by someone, and when they don't get anything from you, they disappear from sight. You can also see pigeons painted in different colors on the streets. At first, you might think they belong to a unique pigeon species due to their colors. But no, they are actually painted, and there is a purpose behind it. If you want to take a photo of these birds, the person feeding them will ask you for money. In a way, they are earning money through the pigeons. The metro system is crucial for transportation in Tashkent. People generally use the metro for their intra-city travels. This metro was constructed as Central Asia's first metro in 1977 and opened for service. As you know, one of the most dazzling aspects related to the Soviet era is their exceptionally well-crafted metro stations. In Uzbekistan, too, every metro that was opened during that time captivates people with its visual appeal. For intercity travel, they often use trains in Uzbekistan. The train staff consists of men who wear smart uniforms to the best of their ability. While the minimum wage in Uzbekistan amounts to $320, ordinary workers earn around $500. As a result, there is a significant flow of young population from Uzbekistan towards European and American countries. Uzbekistan offers an incredible variety of culture and cuisine that will surely satisfy you. However, it seems to fall short of being a country where you can earn good money for a permanent living. You can like the video and become a channel member to support our channel. Goodbye.